EP-Link's latest travel router is the first to use Wi-Fi 7 technology. It's small, it's portable, and it can be found for cheap when on sale. But is this the router you need on your next trip? The Wi-Fi 7 travel router is as small in real life as it is in the promo images, with a profile small enough to fit in the palm of my hand. I'm not sure why anyone would need to do this, but it can also easily fit in your pants or your jacket pocket. It has two antennas, one on each side, that can be tucked away or pointed up. The one LED on the device, hidden away in the device's grill, is the only indication that the router is powered on and working. On the back side, you'll find a USB-C port to power on the device. When testing, I used an anchor power bank to power on the device, which worked fine. It speaks to the portability of the travel router. Additionally, there is a USB 3.0 port that can be used for file sharing or for hooking up a hotspot dongle. Finally, there's a 2.5 gigabit LAN port and a single 1 gigabit LAN port. The router looks modest from the outside, but there's a lot to sink your teeth into. This tiny travel router can work like a traditional router, like the one you use at home. However, if you're traveling and lack access to Ethernet cable, you can use your phone's hotspot or a hotspot dongle to connect the router to the internet. While you can use your phone as a hotspot, connecting it to this router gives you access to features like 4K QAM, MLO, and a built-in VPN server. It can also handle more devices than your phone. The router can also work in hotspot mode, acting as a middleman between a public network and the users on your network. You only need to log into the captive portal once. Also, in APRE client mode, the router can work as an access point, range extender, or a client for adding Wi-Fi connectivity to wired-only devices devices, like a desktop PC with no Wi-Fi card. The TP-Link TLWR3602BE is a dual-band BE3600 router capable of delivering up to 2882 megabits per second speeds on the 5 GHz network. However, it might be confusing that this is a Wi-Fi 7 router that doesn't use 3 bands, including the newer 6 GHz band. While this router doesn't have the faster 6 GHz band, it does use Wi-Fi 7 technologies, which is why it's still a Wi-Fi 7 router. These technologies include multi-link operation, also known as MLO. Essentially, this combines both the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands to improve the speed and reliability of the network. You also get 4K QAM, which transmits more data and speeds up downloads. The ability to add a VPN server to the router is also a huge plus when traveling and connecting to public networks. On paper, TP-Link's Wi-Fi 7 travel router looks very appealing. It retails for $139 on Amazon, though as of the time of this video, it's currently on sale for $119 with an additional promo code that knocks it down to $99. There's not much to say about the installation except that it was smooth. I connected the router to a power bank, waited for it to power on, and then proceeded to follow the steps on the TP-Link Tether app. Scanning the QR code worked like a charm, and I was setting up the router immediately. Before setting up the network, the app asks you how you'll be using the device. In my case, I chose the router option, but you can easily set it up as a hotspot too. When setting up the network, I chose to use the default login information, which populated automatically but it can also be found in the sticker under the router. Once you're done setting up, you can continue to adjust settings within the app. I set up a VPN server in a few minutes. The setup process for a VPN server that's on the list like NordVPN is likely faster. I went with ProtonVPN instead, which requires a few extra steps and a bit of know-how since it's not supported outright by the app. Regardless, the process was less of a hassle than I expected. The VPN feature allowed me to choose whether every device uses the VPN server or only some. Within the app, I also set up what the action button does. That's the switch beside the WPS button on the side of the router. There's only three things the action button can do, and I went with the VPN option, allowing me to toggle the VPN on and off quickly. While I had no need to, you can also switch the mode of the device from router mode to one of the other modes. Additionally, within the app, you can activate quality of service, tweak parental control settings, and run security scans. And there's a lot more you can do. Now for the best part, the speed test. On a gigabit network, I ran three speed tests, one nearby at 5 feet, one further away at 15 feet with one wall in between, and another at 25 feet with one wall in between. Speed tests can fluctuate based on the time of day, the device you're using, and the server you're connected to, so take it with a grain of salt. That said, this tiny router surprised me. At 5 feet away, I recorded a download speed of 689 megabits per second and an upload speed of 754 megabits per second. At 15 feet away, download speeds clocked in at 444 megabits per second and upload speeds of 200 megabits per second. And at 25 feet away, I documented download and upload speeds of 357 and 86 megabits per second respectively. While the drop in download speed was expected and tolerable the further I got from the router, the upload speeds really took a beating, so you want to stay close of uploading to socials or sending documents. The router has the option to enable an MLO network, which combines both bands. While the speed difference wasn't night and day, the MLO network did produce faster download and upload speeds for the most part. For example, at 25 feet away, download speeds came in at 391 megabits per second with an upload speed of 119 megabits per second. Compared to the 5G network, the MLO network's download speed was faster by 34 megabits per second. 
Like I said, not a major difference, but it's something worth considering. If you're joining a video conferencing call or streaming on Netflix show, it can't hurt to be on the MLO network since it promises more reliability. The travel router category is not as populated with options as the home router space, but there are alternatives. If you still want a TP-Link travel router with a lot of the same features but at less than half the cost, the TLWR1502X is a worthwhile option. This $50 Wi-Fi 6 router is not as fast as the newer Wi-Fi 7 router from TP-Link, but it can still perform in multiple modes such as router, hotspot, and USB tethering modes. Additionally, you get VPN security. If budget is a priority, the GL iNet GLMT300N V2 is a popular option on Amazon with over 12,000 reviews. This is a single band router capable of up to 300 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz network, meaning it's very slow. The upside is you can still access various modes and it's very easy to configure via the web control panel. You also get VPN security. Though this travel router is far from the best, it does get you a lot for very little. If you want one of the best travel routers currently on the market, you can go wrong with the TP-Link TLWR3602BE. While it lacks the 6 GHz band, it manages to deliver fast speeds on either the 5G or MLO networks. With the addition of multiple router modes, VPN security, and a fast 2.5 GB Ethernet port, this router stands above the rest.